Hey guys, welcome back to Oxy Not Included, Clay's Amazing Space Colony Simulator Extraordinaire. My name is Twitchy and we are in the LZ Alpha for what will be the final time today. Yes, today, today uh, for me is the 8th of December and the Oxygen Not Included DLC Spaced Out is dropping. So we are going to be getting rid of this map and coming in with a new one. It's a little bit sad. It's a, it's a, it's a day that we shall face with sorrow, but move on with uh, a glad feeling in our hearts that we get to experience whole, whole new worlds and experience because the new DLC has a whole bunch of new stuff in it. So we'll be coming back. But I thought that we we could just take a little bit of a moment here to go around this base. I'm hoping that this will take, uh, I don't know, 20 minutes or so. I'm hoping this will take a, a good episode's worth. We'll just go around and see all the things that we have done here. And I want to start you off here at the, what I classify as the starting base. We're in this little box here is where we first dug out our little area with just the first three people. We had Mad Frank misaligned and I believe... It was either Lunar or Forest. I can't remember. I, I can't remember. I didn't but this I, I can't remember who the first three were. Oh, terrible start already. But anyway, those three were side off here. We dug this area out. We got, our, got ourselves some toilets going. We got ourselves enough living area. And of course, the microbe musher. And we used to have two rows of um, millwood. Uh, they, they, they now grow over here in what used to be the uh, Drek farm. But uh, yeah, we used to have a whole bunch of millwood. And for the longest time, we survived off of mush bars. The, this no longer, not mush bars, lice loaf, sorry. This no longer is the case because it takes too much dirt up. Uh, but that's that's where we started. Then we came over here, we got a nice little, uh, little, little uh, plumbing system sorted for the uh, toilets. So it was, uh, we, we started off with the, the standard terrible, terrible outhouses, but we very quickly got onto the water system uh, because what the toilets produce a little bit more water per cycle than they actually consume. So you can have a little tank over here. I had a different type of scrubbing system, but eventually we got down to this chlorine based one uh, and this now just creates a little bit of water every now and then mostly it provides its own water by the power of coming in and getting a uh first warmed up by this aqua tuna and then the aqua tuna itself cools the water back down into dealable temperatures over here but that deals with the number of uh, of germs we've got going on the first major build that we ran into was of course this natural gas geyser down here it is a uh, changed form since we first made this we used to have a bunch of natural gas generators over here but we, we've since streamlined it all down to make make it so that we only have one area or with the autosave <laughs> and then we uh, we only have this one area now, but it used to be that we had uh, a, a com combustion area with every natural gas geyser, and this is where we started. We had a, a, an old battery bank over here, and the beginnings of our terrible, terrible power grid started. Now, let's uh, let's zoom up and see how bad our power grid is looking. You know what? That's it's not too bad. We've got a major spline going up and down here. This is where it all started, and we uh, branched back. But of course, after getting this up and running, I decided that I wanted to dig down and try and find the slicks before we got down there though uh the, these guys um came into our life via the magic of the golden arch over here so we ended up building a little coal generator this was actually up in this area to begin with but uh after a little bit of time we decided it was actually better to move it down here we had ourselves a coal generator a slickster ranch with a uh, crude oil pickup point down below followed by an oil refinery and a polymer press we used to also have a petrol generator here but that got too hot we we, we just couldn't deal with that being in there. But the coal generators would keep the slicksters warm enough. I'm not sure if you guys are aware that you need to have a certain minimum temperature for slicksters to be healthy. It doesn't tell us here. Let's go and have a look in the database entry. You can see they've got a little... If, if it was below 35, um, we would have some big troubles. If it was below 50, we'd have minor troubles. But we, we occasionally got it down below 35. We lost a few slicksters every now and then. It was great times, especially when we didn't understand what was going on. But now that we do, uh, we've got this little space heater in in the corner here keeping this all above above 70 i thought it was above 60 but i will take that above a 70 is that have we got any uh, heat spilling out this is one thing that i think we could have done better throughout the entire map was have better thermal control over the doors one, one of the things that i i feel like we didn't do was leave enough space you see we've got like these three wide corridors everywhere i feel like what we actually wanted to do was a ladder down the middle a ladder where these two walls are and then have a gap in the building so uh, that, i think that's the thing that we're going to do mostly during the next 
next map is, of course, make lots more space. Loads, loads, loads more space. We're not going to look at the Golden Arch, don't care. The next thing we found was this anti-entropy thermal nullifier. Yeah, this was great. This this was actually uh, a hell of a find. Uh, and also a saltwater geyser. Now, this saltwater geyser over here, I, I don't know if there's anything that I could have done better. I'm not sure how we could have made this system so much stronger. We started off using the thermal anti, uh, the anti-entropy thermal nullifier to try and cool it down. I think we've got some pipes still in place here from that. But once we got our full um, steam, uh, full steel and aqua tumor thing uh, turning over, you know, the standard cooling mechanism number one, uh, I felt like this was cooling down much, much, much faster. And this is where the majority of our oxygen, at least to begin the game, came from. If we press F7 here, you can see we've got this whole convoluted filtering system here. This is probably where the majority of the excess power drain comes from. This should, in theory, be making uh, plus power, but no, 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 we, we, we got problems, right? Um, and from this area, of course, it was a short hop, skip, and a jump down to the lower area. I found another natural gas geyser and of course we set up quite a nice area for that and I believe right at the top we also found a third one there were three natural gas generators on this map where, where are you here's the third one uh, it was when I found this one that I decided I wanted to try and compactify the design down a little bit and I feel like this is really the best idea that we've got here this little thermal uh, this little um, liquid shutoff valve here very important I kept on pouring water down this way and it would all get all get very very cold and freeze over I was also using some of the chill the excess chill that we've got here you can see how it's very, very cold thanks to this cooling device going around and making sure everything is cold before indeed cooling down the natural gas before we pick it up, burn it. That, that's kind of the loop that's going on here. We've got the natural gas goes down, temperature gets checked. If it's cool enough, the gas pump picks it up. We go and burn it. And then, of course, all the power from this cools everything down. And then we've got some like, waste product dealing with down below. And the water is part of the waste product system. Okay, cool. That's pretty sound. Uh, but very quickly became apparent that running our base off of the natural gas geysers was not going to be a winner and a little bit further down we found ourselves two petroleum geysers there was also a whole bunch of crude oil just kicking about like we, so we ended up pouring a lot of that down here i don't believe you mr food shortage don't worry the water is up and running it's coming back notice how the numbers have been growing since we have been talking uh, and i decided that there was a, a definite need down below to draw all the heat out of the lava now i am a little bit guided it take, took us so long to put this temperature shift plate in place here this 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 was the winner but the basic idea that we've got going on is we've got some crude oil being poured down and into this little funnel here where it comes down and meets this second system now the majority of this is diamond window tile it's one of the one of the materials with the highest thermal conductivity so it can pull all the heat out of the lava and dump it into this door now this door either opens or closed at the dictate of this thermo thermo sensor or a thermo I mean, whatever you want to call it, that's fine. Uh, if we get above 400, the door opens. If we get below 400, the door snaps closed. When the door is closed, it acts as a heat sink, passing the heat from this window tile to this uh, temperature shift plate, which then boils up our crude oil. It, the crude oil, if it gets above 399.9 degrees, it's actually 403, but you know, if it gets above that temperature, it will transition into petroleum. You see, we've got crude oil here, and slowly as this uh, door closes, starts pumping heat into this crude oil and we should start watching it change uh, slowly but surely into another form. We got 402.1. Okay, that's not not going to quite work for us uh, to, to see. How about if we go up? I bet if we put 410 we can watch it happen and then we'll, we'll pump it back down once we've watched it. Okay, here we go. As you can see, the mechanized airlock here is passing the temperature onto the temperature shift plate, which is then passing on to everything around this 3x3 three three square. I was a little bit worried that maybe we're putting too much temperature into the insulated tiles over here, but I don't think that's actually how that works anymore. It used to be that you could do that and just waste a whole bunch of heat. But as you can see, we are pushing the crude oil back just a little bit. Uh, 402, come on, let's let's get that temperature up just a little bit more and we can start watching a crazy, crazy transformation. That said, I think we're actually watching some transformation going up here. We got some petroleum, some crude oil, we got things going on. Oh, there it goes, it changed. Did you guys watch it change? I watched it change. Uh, and now for stability's sake, I'm gonna pull this back down. But then once we have got ourselves some 
boiling hot petroleum. I mean, 500 degrees. How do you deal with that? Well, 400 degrees. How do you deal with that? Well, it turns out it's not using these steam turbines. One of the first things we set up over here was two steam turbines, a steam room, and then the liquid pipes that will go around, pick up the heat from this area, or at least that was the, the idea. Like, we got some, uh, some petroleum down here. It would come in at a cooler temperature, pick up the heat that is in this area, and then dump it into the steam, where the steam turbines would cool it back down. It was an, it was an all right plan. It worked. It was slow. That was the main problem. But it worked, as I said. This temperature, uh, this thermo sensor right here, cooks up to this whole bunch of automation that I've got. Now, th this is actually two systems. If I draw a line down here, across here, and down here, uh, this is one system, and then this is another system. And the, the entire process, the entire purpose of these, sorry, is to open this internal door here so that we have, like, a vacuum in between. If I pull up my gas states, you see that there's nothing in between. In fact, there's no nothing over here either, but you can see there's nothing to transfer any heat around. So this this side is, like, 400 degrees, and this side is being brought down to about 208, uh, 250 is what we should be aiming for. And if these these conditions are not met, the internal door open, the external doors close, all doors close at once, actually, and then the internal doors open, creating a vacuum to seal this off from each side. This one, this one over this side is all about the temperature. This one is all about how much liquid we've got in there. So if, if it cools down enough, these ones will open, allowing the petroleum that is inside to flow down into here and get pumped over to our petroleum generators. A uh, little bit of a stutter there. Um, but this one is all about the amount of liquid we've got. So if there's not enough liquid in here, this door will open and allow more liquid to flow. It's quite a nice system, actually. I like it. I will probably be using this one again. It's the actual cooling system that we'll be trying to do something different with. And of course, once you've got a massive amount of heat on the go, you're like, well, why not put our generators and stuff in here as well, including like cooling systems? What is this? What is this? Oh, no, we've got some naphtha. Naphtha's never great. That means I've melted some plastic somewhere. Let's just uh, ask those to get melted. Oh, there it is. Oh, I see. Oh, I tried to um, destroy one of these high pressure gas vents so that I could put it over here. I must have must have melted one. Whoops. But anyway, as I was saying, as we got a whole bunch of heat here, I decided that it was a good place to put my petroleum generators and stuff like that. If we open up, you can see that this will pick up some petrol, bring it up via the wonders of all these uh, gas pipes and lines and into this filter where the first thing that happens is petroleum is filtered off and it comes down to get burnt down here. There is also a second line where petroleum can go, but it's currently unattached. Uh, that goes up to my, my petrol rockets. Uh, this is another area where things can happen like... What is happening? happened here heavy watt wire just please re reseal that uh so as i was about to say these molten slicksters down here they consume all the carbon dioxide that comes out of these uh petroleum generators uh, these are also listed as petroleum generators but they they consume ethanol uh no no real no real difference there apart from occasionally we get some leakage i fixed that problem now uh we just haven't got rid of the of the gas but yeah these slicksters down here so the ones up top they were like hey if you've got me between uh let's let's have a look here if you've got me between 20 and 60 i'll make a long-haired slickster if you've got me between 120 uh, 100 and 250 i'll make a molten lava so i brought some of the normal slicksters down here and what do you know oh, i took only a little bit of time for the temperature to affect these guys into making molten slicksters and these guys, let's have a look at them over here. Can we see? They, they eat carbon dioxide, as I was saying, out of the petroleum generators. And then they excrete petrol. I mean, that just... That sounds like an infinite loop of wonder there. Now, we've got ourselves up to an incredibly high pressure of carbon dioxide, so I have no idea whether this is being anywhere near efficient enough. I feel like next time we want to have ourselves a bunch of, like, um vertical strips each one with a petroleum generator above it and then the necessary number of molten slicksters underneath each having their grooming station yeah yeah maybe we'll try that next time you, you you guys could see like four separate vertical columns here right each one with a slickster ranch down the bottom and then like the space up above enables them to have the enough yeah I, I feel like that's something we'll be doing next time of course once we got all the heat as i was saying we needed to do something with our metal and our glass forge we need we needed somewhere to dump all the oh man it's hard to see here it really is but if you if you follow this line this one that comes out and over this is where we dump our coolant out of our metal refinery to uh to, to basically dump all its heat into this steam so it can carry on making steam gold iron whatever 
it is it needs to make up here. Again, if I was going to do this again, I would definitely make a metal refinery, maybe like down this edge, and then we could have a whole bunch of loops coming into the steam. Yeah, I, I feel like there's more, more we could have done to be better here. Hey, Wise, thanks very much. You've definitely uh, done well for me there. Of course, power systems were the perennial issue of my map. I just, I'm not very good at the power systems. I don't know what it is I'm doing uh, so badly wrong. If you guys can tell, let me know. But the major way that I have been working my system is we've got a major spline running through the center. Um, basically, this heavy wire goes and connects all my little subsystems together. Each subsystem, I try to make power positive. Um, so, or at least each each producing system because of course any any system that you make let's, let's say these petroleum generators here these like produce carbon dioxide so we've got to make the, 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 the slicksters cool uh, they produce heat so I've got to cool it down and every item has to have this whole um, slew of I want, to, I want to call it entourage accompanying buildings you know uh, that have to go with it so occasionally you end up making yourself something like this this is my steam vent it's uh, releasing a lot of steam every so often I've got some steam turbines up above I've got a couple of thermal aqua tuners uh, but unfortunately this just doesn't quite make enough heat now thankfully I'm using it as a source of water so I'm happy to pump a little bit more power into it I, well, I mean happy is a bit strong there but I, I am okay with the idea that I'm pumping excess power into it because I'm getting a product out at the end but there was the longest time where this was literally just kind of breaking even on, on, on everything so uh, yeah it, it wasn't it wasn't great but let's let's talk about this actual situation here as I say, we've got a steam vent and it goes up ahead and uh, triggers these two steam, steam turbines. They've got them, their own little um, automation system here with a temperature output. We want it to be above 200 so the steam turn, turns over efficiently. And of course, we want to make sure that the pressure is indeed high enough. Right here, we've got more, enough pressure but not enough temperature. That's why these two are not cranking over. Uh, from that, we needed a cooling system because of course, these guys would just get too, too, too hot. Uh, we started off with a bunch of wheeze warts. Wasn't good enough. It wasn't even anywhere near near good enough. This is the majority of the weasel warts that are on my map, by the way. I, I don't know if you guys are aware, but like, look at them all. Look at them all. And we still ended up having to pass a liquid cooling system around in the background. Now, thankfully, they're both working with each other now, so the cooling is helping the weasel warts, and the weasel warts are helping the cooling. Uh, but this then comes down to my, my first storage area. Now, it used to be, it used to be that this storage area would be the thing that triggers the overflow, and then they would come down and get dumped into my... Let's, let's go down all the way down. It's a lot further away than I thought it was into my steam box down here. Um... Uh, but eventually we ended up making what's known as a Rodriguez upstairs. We'll, we'll talk about this once we get up up to the top. But yeah, eventually we ended up making this, and this is where the majority of my water actually ends up now, or at least my overflow water. The majority of my water actually ends up down here in this cooling loop. You see that we've got two thermal aqua tuners. This is where the majority of my power gets eaten. Um, two thermal aqua tuners, of course, with their own suite of um, automation systems, making sure that things aren't overheating, making sure that they're not overheating, making sure the water is cool enough, extracting the water at the right temperature. There's a whole bunch of stuff going on here, and it, it's as messy as it looks. But eventually, what this means is that we have uh, cool water going up and around the cooling loop up here. Uh, we have some excess water coming out into my actual water system. This comes down into my <laughs> sorry, sorry excuse for a main water tank. Isn't it weird that my septic tank is bigger than my water tank? Any anyway, anyway. And, and when everything is fully up and functional, we even get to have a little bit bit excess power flowing out and back into the power spline so that's pretty cool we used to have a little bit of a uh, an oxygen making system over here uh, it was more trouble than it's worth far 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 more trouble than it's worth so we ended up ripping that down and it was about that time that i thought that maybe it was time to move all our duplicates out of this middle area here the big problem that i had was that i was trying to get everyone contained into atmosphere suits but i had a base that was permeable on both sides and even i wanted to have some extra doors going up the sides because we'd end up with people trying to go in up up over this area here and down here. This was my uh, my uh, attempt at ranching various things. My Drexel died. My molten, my long-haired slicksters have never really done anything other than pro provide a bit of meat. But one thing that did happen that was good, we'll get back to this talk in a second. One thing that did happen that was good over here is that I actually managed to make a puffed slime farm. Now, I didn't know whether this was going to be a worker or not. And to be honest, looking at my dust caps over here, it's not been amazing. At no point have we had a full, uh, full line of dust caps just being fully, fully uh, fertilized. Oh, they've also got a body temperature issue. Oh. 
Oh, they're too hot. This, this, this is something that's just been happening um, quietly in the background over the past three or four episodes. Things have just started tipping over the point of what like these little cooling systems can deal with. But anyway, as I was saying, uh, if we look at this shipping line, you can see that I've got two conveyor loaders here. Both of them are asking for slime, and then we've got these auto sweepers waiting for our puffs to do their thing. Are you gonna, are you gonna, are you gonna do your thing there, buddy? Got someone in to groom him in the hopes that that will uh, speed up the process. Okay, okay, he stayed puffed. This is good. This looks like it might be the winner. You're gonna drift up. You're gonna do your thing. Okay, he drifts up. He drops himself a little bit of slime. That, that's supposed to be what happens next. There goes some slime. The auto sweeper picks it up, pops it into the conveyor load over here, uh, gets passed along behind some 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 blocks this was a very important thing for me to work out is that the uh, the slime would outgas if we didn't put it through blocks if we if we had it going through the open air it would outgas and we'd have all sorts of troubles there uh, and then we've got to get put in this conveyor receptacle where people come along and uh, the, the fertilize them we got 4000 grams per cycle and of course all we've made oh we've got like 14 kilograms that's pretty tasty we don't normally get this much and that's how I made uh, one of my extraneous food sources. Of course, like, we were surviving on weasel... Uh, yeah, no, no, no. And that's how I made uh, mushrooms. That was, that was pretty good. Of course, we were surviving on uh, Millwood over here for the longest time, right up until we re ran out of dirt. Um... But anyway, I was talking about how I was going to try and move all these guys because the atmosphere dock suits were being a bit of a trouble. Uh, we were trying to get people in and out, but of course they'd come out of this side with an atmosphere suit off of this rack, come down, find some way of getting up and around here, and then end up dropping suits on the floor. Now, that was massively inconvenient. So I was like, okay, we're going to just turn all that off and move these guys over here. We've got ourselves a, a beautiful hotel um, stack here. This outline, if we follow this, this one from this floor down is the maximum we can have if we have this uh, this grand hall here. What's the button for the room? As you can see, we've got a great hall here. We've got a whole bunch of individual bedrooms. They're beautiful. There's such great mor morale off of those. And of course, bathrooms down the end. Washrooms, in fact. Okay. Latrine or washroom. Okay, those are the two differences. All right, that, 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 that's cool. That's cool. I was beginning to work on the top one up here for some new people. And of course, weird stowaway girl that appeared out of nowhere. I, I I have a couple of theories about what happened with her. Maybe, maybe. So for those of you that don't know, last episode, this girl, we just, we, we found her. We just found her down here. She was just chilling. Um, and so I've got I've got two two theories. One is I don't know if you noticed I've got a, a how to debug tutorial on my channel, which means obviously in the file structure in the background, I've got the, the debug um, text file. Now, I have never pressed the debug buttons on this map. Not not even once. It would de destroy the purpose. I've got a testing world. I don't need to do that here. Uh, so... I, I don't think it's ever that. One thing we have been doing recently is checking the blueprint. Ooh, ooh, yeah, we'll take that still, is checking the blueprints. And maybe, maybe I hit print instead of reject, but I just I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't know whether we can get duplicates from rockets or not. I just don't think so. I just don't think so. So anyway, this was going well, and we, we've got ourselves a whole bunch of power outlets to do that, uh, to, to provide power for this lot. And then we found... Let's have a look, where are you? We found this hydrogen vent underneath here. And I was like, okay, this is producing hydrogen at ooh, 500 degrees. Surely, surely we're going to need a whole bunch of steam vents to uh, to cool this down enough before the, uh, the the radiant cooling that we do, like we like we did up here. You see how we've got like um, cool, get, cool liquids going through the gas to cool it down we use very much the similar system over here but let me tell you this is super overkill if i go back up over this way i've got the second hydrogen vent that we found um batteries down here because we're also using it to chill water but the actual hydrogen vent set up here only needs to be here so we've got this cooling system we've got three hydrogen burners we've got ourselves some liquids cooling down the actual hydrogen and that's it that's all we need we pick up the hydrogen with these gas uh, gas pumps here it passes it down to the overflow uh, down to the overflow reservoir and then that is picked up by all of the generators. The overflow reservoir is hardly ever needed but it just stops the hydrogen vent ever getting to the point where it's like oh I'm over pressure I can't I can't release anything here uh, you can see I've got 1200 grams here mainly because I just wanted these guys to be passing out entire full packets of hydrogen when it pumps rather than you know micrograms at a time. At the same time I decided that it was time to take down this cool steam vent now obviously it was producing um oxygen uh, no sorry it was producing steam at about 150 
110 degrees. And I thought that maybe, maybe we could put some weed warts up there. Unfortunately, as I was building this area, all the heat that was coming out of the cool steam vent ended up melting the majority of this. I can't, I can't even plant in here at the moment because... I mean, it's, 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 it's melt. I, I, I don't think that's going to work. I, th I think that's just going to be flooded. Uh, but anyway, the, the latent heat of all this being melted was actually enough to keep this down cool enough to start condensing the steam out of here. And I was like, we'll get around to making a proper cooling system for it later. Of course, that never happened. The latent heat up here was always enough to keep it cool. Uh, and then down here, we've got another cooling system that specifically cools this water down enough to go to our farms. Now, the majority of the water that I've been cooling down, I've only been cooling down to 70 degrees. For instance, this water geyser that we found very late in the game, uh, this guy literally just picks up whatever is uh, is being thrown out of here. We've got ourselves a steel pump and it's coming out about 90 degrees in places. Uh, I think this has been dormant for a little while now. This, this guy, the biggest problem of my life is he likes to go dormant for a long, long time. Anyway, and then we send off this hot, big inverted commas, hot water uh, to go like pump out some oil wells because these guys don't really care what temperature the water goes into following up and past it we can see that it also carries on up to the Rodriguez that I have over here um, and this also doesn't really care what what temperature the water you pump into as long as it's not above like 70 degrees or something and by the time we pass it through the entire base it's really not above 70 degrees uh, uses an anti-entropy thermal nullifier here these two go together so so well uh, and, and that, that pumps out uh, nicely a chilled oxygen if we follow the line of this nice chilled oxygen you see i've got a whole bunch of systems here this is just an overflow valve uh this is literally just if we ever end up backing up it lets a little bit of oxygen out to space uh this should hardly ever happen because we have a lot lot of other systems consuming the oxygen uh in, including bypasses and, and switch passes and stuff like that but anyway this this here we've got ourselves a bit of a a, a, a purity check uh, this literally just, hey, if you're not oxygen, get out of the gas vent. That's nice and simple. And then it all gets passed down this way. Great big long line past our bristle blossoms, past our natural gas geyser, down to the hotel where it goes into the atmosphere checkpoints. Of course, this is not the end point for all the oxygen. We've got, we've got this guy spewing over here. We've also got, if you remember, these guys down by the salt producing excess oxygen. So, of course, this isn't being used by the atmosphere doctor anymore it's being uh, used to pump oxygen into the base into the starter base as well of course we still are keeping our atmosphere check suits um checkpoints uh let's try that again we are of course still keeping our atmosphere suit checkpoint docks there we go that was a bit of a tongue twister up to maximum oxygens um uh, pouring ba pouring oxygen into the base as i'd already said and then it comes up to here pours oxygen into the bristle blossoms because it needs a, a high enough a temperature and then coming all the way up to the top we are in our space area now i believe this one's just venting oxygen just because it's the very end of the line and if, if it can't go into the telescope it's going to get vented right up at the very top here we have our first attempt this is literally my first ever attempt oh, power why is this not working what's going on here why are you overheating oh there's problems how how is this over 600 degree what has it not been has it not been meteored i was kind of hoping hoping that some regolith would fall on there and as you can see 300 degrees should have kept it down hmm hmm, hmm. anyway uh let, let's talk about what, what we did here we got we went and dug ourselves out a, a nice big area and put a whole bunch of bunker doors above here this was mainly so i could get my telescope up and running you know we need we need the telescope to be able to see where we're going so we can send the rockets uh, nice and simple as that but of course once you put the bunker doors up you get like these these meteors that just keep falling down out of the sky uh, it's it's troublesome it really is and they like to bury your stuff as you can see in uh, in regolith here so i had to put in some sort of way of clearing all this i ended up using robo miners with like a cooling system down here this this ended up being quite the system to try and put in place mainly it was power problems i've got, I've got a level with you guys mainly it was power problems but eventually we got a system much as we have right now where the robo miners were watching over each other i'm not sure what's going on with this guy this this guy should definitely be uh, be digging uh i'm creating a whole bunch of regolith possibly the biggest source of slowdown in my entire game uh but once we sorted all that out i was like maybe it's time what, what's going on here why is this bunker door not ready Whoa, 
what the hey this must be a new problem yeah i have no idea what's what's gone wrong there anyway we're, we're gonna leave that we're gonna leave that eventually i decided that it was time to make my way into space of course getting our steam rocketry up and running first this this has already gone over temperature but we used to pump all the steam we would pump just a little bit of water in here that would vaporize almost instantly off of the temperatures of the regoliths coming from the meteors because of course they come down at 300 degrees as i said this then boils up the steam that is in this metal box that i've got and we would then pump that out and into the steam engines they would of course pump that out the back of the rockets off they go and we got to see all the way up to about here with steam engines that, that, that was pretty cool we then started to move on to petroleum that's what that extra line down below was about we'd throw in a whole bunch of petroleum there get ourselves a bit of cooling on the go of course very important because this is super hot petroleum coming from down below uh, 170 degrees 180 degrees and of course up here we're coming through at minus 40 let's have a look at the temperature overlay oh, look at that beautiful petroleum goes in the rockets gets us a whole bunch of data banks some um some some artifacts and things like that so a few things that i've still not shown you this is my third hydrogen vent uh this was the third one that i built and i think this is probably the most compact and most awesome design i came up for this uh, the, the hydrogen vent let's go through it as you can see we just got some gas pumps i decided that the overflow was just not necessary for for this one so they go up and straight into the hydrogen generator the hydrogen generators of course power everything before the excess is to, uh, filtered off by this large power transformer we got the cooling unit of course needs to cool down the hydrogen but of course cools down everything else in the system including itself as well plenty of ethanol ethanol has always been my cooling of choice it turns out as long as we can keep it nice and low enough everything works out quite well power issues over here no problem as soon as it starts up uh, we always keep a little bit of excess power going in these smart batteries that keep these gas pumps going uh, yeah I, I remember having a little bit of a a balancing issue with that but as soon as that gets going that will be fine but down here as well do you remember i've said many times now that we ran out of dirt i know shocking who who even runs out of dirt well it turns out that you can make make more dirt using this box of tricks here so we got an arbitrary up on top uh let, let, let's start with that arbitraries they are fed by polluted water now you're just gonna have to have a source of polluted water this doesn't make polluted water itself it just comes from uh from from here actually my gas geysers um there, there is a, a polluted water excess there so i use that to pump into the arbitraries now the arbitraries grow grow little twigs on the side here and this eventually turns into lumber some wood can we can we actually see any no we can't see any it uh, gets turned into lumber which the duplicates come along and cut and these auto sweepers pick up put into the conveyor loader and then place lumber onto this line here it comes down it goes through a whole bunch of filtering and it also picks up some regolith if needed and comes down to the ethanol distillers oh yeah i love it so this is where the ethanol comes from for the uh, ethanol burners down below that i was talking about in the steam box um, and also, of course, we've got a cooling system, always necessary. But the ethanol comes along. It creates polluted dirt as well as ethanol. It turns the lumber that we've got down the bottom here. This comes from, uh, let's have a look, from the arbitrary right there. Uh, it gets put by the power of the auto sweeper into the ethanol distiller. Uh, the ethanol distiller makes polluted dirt, which then gets put into the conveyor loaders and shared out amongst these composters out here. Now, this is the only point where we need, well, actually, it's not quite the only point we need. We need duplicates to chop down the tree branch is we need duplicates to turn over the compost but the auto sweepers pretty much do everything else this by the way is the maximum density of composters i could get around an auto sweeper i'm certainly open to listening uh, listening to people tell me they've got better but I, I think this is the best one that we can get of course we got ourselves a little bit of an automatic regolith distributor here uh, because one of the things that happens obviously we're making a bunch of polluted dirt uh, which means we're making polluted oxygen but with the the deodoriders this also uh, kicks out clay as well as as you can see up there clay as well as dirt so we go we come in, come in with arbitrary well basically we come in with polluted water we come out with clay and dirt oh and and ethanol and ethanol clay dirt and ethanol it's, it's a really good system i like it i like it a lot now is there anything else that we need to talk about here um well we got that neural vacillator that we've never used i uh, keep spotting that an iron volcano that again we've never used but every time that i look at the, the iron volcano i'm like the stuff falls from the sky why would we use this uh, this is my clay maker we've got a hot polluted oxygen vent uh it sweeps along here we've got the cooling system as per normal of course it is uh, usurping cooling from the natural gas guys are over here uh, and this is going over a whole bunch of deodorizers i was kind of hoping that uh, reglyph would get brought down 
automatically, but it doesn't look like I've actually sorted that system out. No, no, it doesn't look like I have. Okay, well, that, that's fine. But the uh, the clay is picked up automatically, delivered to this conveyor lo loader, and then our stowaway comes and delivers regolith to where it is needed. And this is a really nice system for getting extra clay. Uh, I particularly use this for feeding my hatches. Uh, over, over this way, as you can see, it really it doesn't doesn't go far. Here comes the clay, comes along, gets put in this conveyor receptacle, and then people feed the hatches that clay, which then gets going into the coal generator, slicks, oil, petrol, plastic. One thing that kind of just got crammed into place just because that is where I put it in the first case uh, is this air filtering system, this gas filtering system. Sorry, it's probably the better way of word. Now I'm just going to quickly be like, hey, can someone come and turn this power over? You know, I kind of figured we'd uh, solved all the power issues. All right, who's, who's coming along to be the first person? You, really? Really? I have to be like, hey, actually, seriously? Okay, it was the tiniest bit of power going into there anyway. So as you can see, this uh, takes all my waste gases, which I kind of all feed along through various means into this little junction over here. And then it starts going through all these different gas filters. First thing I do is to get the oxygen out of there because there's always going to be oxygen that I'm picking up. I like to keep my my uh, um, my asteroid fairly well oxygenated so wherever there are waste gases there will be oxygen as well so that's the first thing that i like to get out of there then we've got some chlorine goes across to the decontamination chamber over here it used to actually go to a few places extra as well as you can see it came down this way but uh none of those are needed anymore so we don't really do that uh next we've got the carbon dioxide which maybe actually wants to swap with chlorine because it used to be done in the system of most most encountered so we're not passing gases through uh, filters they don't need to be but it turns out no the carbon dioxide is getting filtered off much more often now this comes down to the slicksters before going down to the molten slicksters a whole bunch of places that the carbon dioxide goes to and of course up to the uh the the mushrooms over here that's that's very important they need they need that Hydrogen, of course, goes to the Drake farm uh, and then off to a hydrogen generator if it is needed. Uh, carbon dioxide, as we've already talked about. And the natural gas, of course, goes up to our natural gas geyser over here. Can we see? The, the problem is most of these gases we don't get anymore. If we do, we get in such tiny little bits like this uh, that we, we end up with tiny little areas coming out. This will get passed up via this whole line over here. It was one of the things that interrupted our oxygen flow uh, before being put into the overflow chamber because, you know, you need it might go over, especially when we're pump pumping extra gases in there, um, and then gets consumed. Uh, almost all of this is just trying to consume everything that's not just oxygen, which we blast out at the end there. And even um, polluted oxygen also gets dropped out because we have a deodorizer underneath. All in all, I am definitely going to be somewhat sad to see this uh, map. It's not really ending. It's just that we've not got to a convenient point to, to, to stop. And I don't think we ever will. I could just carry on. Like, over here, I want to put a soy farm or a sleet wheat farm. Uh, like, there's just there, there's always things that I want to do. I want to improve the power system. At some point, we're going to run out of lava down here. Wouldn't it be great to dig all of this out? But I'm afraid that all of that is going to have to wait for the next map because the DLC is coming out today, which means I will be working almost instantly on the brand new map i am looking for suggestions of duplicates if you want to be in the next map put your name down below give me your feedback give me a suggestion of course thank you so much for watching through with this literally without you guys this episode this, this, this whole thing would be useless would be right it would just be me talking to my screen and my microphone being like why am i doing this but because you guys are out there i love this i, I mean i love this game anyway but I, I, a friend of mine asked me the other day do i do i ever like not record for gaming anymore and like like, no, actually, I don't, because it's so much better talking to you guys. Could you could you imagine doing something socially and then being forced to do it on your own again? That's how I feel about gaming now. But anyway, I will see you next time when we're going to do all of that. Bye.